today we'll be talking about tank bromeliads. So it's a whole different group of bromeliads. There's a lot of different genera within it, but in general they're all going to be relatively like this, very large and hold water in the center. So within the group tank bromeliads, there are things like Neurogalias, the one in front of us. There are Echmias, Varegias. Um, those are the three most common genera that you'll see for, uh, for sale and in cultivation. Uh, if you look in a retail setting, you might see them sold as blushing bromeliads. You also just see the name Echmia or vase plant used um, as well. Many of the tank bromeliads are what we call epiphytic plants. So these are plants that grow without soil. They'll usually be growing in a tree or on a rock. Um, if they're growing on a tree, they're just using that tree as support. They're not actually getting any uh, nutrients or anything off of that. They're not a parasite. They're just using it for support. So while they don't need soil, they still need something to anchor to. Um, so they will use a tree branch or a rock or something like that to affix themselves to and hold themselves upright. Usually you'll see these in the tropical Americas. So you'll find these in a lot of different habitats. Sometimes you'll find them in an understory situation with lower light. Sometimes you'll see them out in full sun. Um, so rainforest situations, there can also be some um, tank bromeliads that will tolerate more of a drier location as well. So being epiphytic plants, being able to grow in areas without soil, this gives these plants an ecological advantage by being able to grow in locations where other species of plants cannot survive. Um, so this help fill in areas where there's no competition. So the tank bromeliads of the group are known as tank bromeliads because they can hold a lot of water in their central rosettes, up to one to two gallons, depending on the size of the bromeliad. And being epiphytic, that means these are little plant pools or phytotomata that are hanging up in a tree someplace, 20, 30 feet above the ground, holding two gallons of water or so. So these become habitats for amphibians for part of their life cycle. Uh, various insects will use them. Spiders will build webs over top of them to catch insects flying in. There's a whole ecosystem built around these phytotomata or plant pools. Uh, tank bromeliads will be pollinated by various things, ranging from insects to small birds. Each genre will have a different flower structure. So things like this bromelia next to me, a Neurogalia, will have the flowers located inside the central rosette. Other genre like Echmias, which are some of the bromelias behind me, will have a very tall, uh, slender inflorescence, which are more prone to be pollinated by birds. So if you want to propagate one of these, they're actually relatively easy to propagate by division, which is the easiest way um, for bromelias in general. You can also grow them from seed, but it takes two or three years at least. It's a much slower process. So once one of these bromeliads flower, they will die. They're called what's a monocarpic plant. So mono means one, and then carpic means fruit, so one fruit. So once they flower and set seed, that central rosette will die, and then the plant will reproduce itself by producing offsets at the base, which then can be separated out and grown on as new plants. Many tank bromeliads are um, very adaptable and can grow inside just fine. You'll find them for sale at many big box stores, um, things like Neurogalias and Echmias. Um, They'll grow just about with any light, either bright indirect sunlight or direct sunlight, and can tolerate low humidity, which is often found in um, homes, especially during the winter. Mm -hmm.